Hey y'all, it's Nicole at Much Skin in the Making, and tonight I want to show you what I've been making lately. And I have a couple of them that I want to share with you, but it's wooden door hangers. And this is the first one. This is, hey y'all, and it has the cheetah print at the top. Um, and then I've also done one for fall with the Hello Pumpkin, and it also has the cheetah print. But this time it has the cheetah that's embellished with some gold trim. So um, here's the deal. I'm going to be making these just a few to sell. But since I can only make a few myself, I thought it would be a really good idea to show you how to do it. And so I'm going to be giving just a brief tutorial on this fairly easy, fairly simple project to do. And I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I have. So the first step is to decide what kind of wood you're going to use. I've seen them made out of much thicker stuff, but mine is just really thin. I think this is like one-eighth of an inch um, Luan or plywood or whatever. Um, you can order pre-cut wood rounds online. You can get them... Um, Sometimes you can find them from Hobby Lobby, and you can also order from Etsy or Amazon. But as it happens, I had some plywood in out in my building that my father-in-law had given to us recently that he wasn't using. And I thought, well, I can come up with something to do with that. And so I took the top of an old cheese box that I had and just traced around that and then cut along the line with a skill saw. Now, you might be able to tell, I don't know if you really can from there, but my surfaces are not just 100% perfect. So if you want a really, there's a place that's, that's got a little dip in it. If you want just a really polished, 100% perfect sign, you might prefer the laser cuts that you can get, um, like I said, at Hobby Lobby, Etsy, Amazon, something like that. But for me, I'm good with a little imperfection, and um, hey, that's life, right? And so, um, I just decided to cut my own, and once I had, I'm, I'm not showing that part because, number one, um, I struggle a little bit with the skill saw. I enjoy using power tools, but I'm not what you would want to call proficient. Number two, it's really loud if I use that on camera, so I'm going to spare you the loudness. And, um, yeah, number three, we're just going to jump ahead to, um, the good stuff. Okay, so now for the fun part. For this step, I'm going to be using this Krylon Chalky Finish Antiquing Wax in Dark Vintage. And I'm using this instead of stain, partly because it's less messy and partly because um, there's, there's no fumes. So I don't have to worry about having fumes up here in my craft room. So I'm just going to use a foam brush to brush this on and then just an old scrap of one of my oops shirts, as I call them, that I've messed up with my sublimation. I went ahead and put on a latex glove to do this because it's less messy than stain, but it is a little messy. But we're just going to brush some of this dark antique wax onto our wood round. And once that's done, like I said, we'll just wipe it off with a, um, the piece of t-shirt. And you don't even have to be careful with this, you know, just slap it on any old way because when you wipe it down it's not going to matter. The finish is going to be good once you wipe it all off. So just keep on brushing until you get the entire su surface well covered. And I discovered this stuff when I was doing some furniture refinishing but it ended up being a lot darker. Um, in this particular shade than what I had in mind. And so I decided, well, I still had some of it on hand and that's what I would use for this wood round project. And now all you have to do is just take that rag, what 
whatever you've decided to use. An old piece of t-shirt works good or an old washcloth that's seen better days and just wipe off the excess. Uh, I'm trying not to get it on my work table. I haven't had my work table long. I was operating on my own. Two small little desk surface for a long time, so I'm really proud of my pretty table. And if I can keep that from getting messed up, that's what I want to do. However, I'm also out of butcher paper, which I use for absolutely everything from um, when I'm doing the sublimation, I use that for uh, a protective covering to keep um, the ink off of the plating for my heat press. And when I'm painting or doing something messy on my work table, that's what I use it for here. But I am 100% out. I've got to get some ordered. But anyway, that's it. Okay, so now what I've done, I've taken the stained wood round and just taped off a section with just blue painter's tape and used this um, white um, apple barrel acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be this kind of paint. It can be whatever you have on hand. That is fine. And I just taped off a section with the painter's tape and um, painted. I can't get it turned right. <laughs> Oh my goodness y'all sorry painted a section white so all that's left to do now is just decide what we're gonna put on it and cut our stencil okay so we've switched to screen recording and I use Cricut design space to cut the stencil because I have the Cricut maker machine so that's what I use um, Let's go back. Let's cancel out of that because I had been playing around with it um, a few minutes ago. But I want to cancel. Cancel. We'll just delete all this. And then I'm just going to go to text. And we'll just keep this one real simple. I'll type in welcome. Um, that's not going to be the... Um, font well it's going to be the font that we want but we just don't want it in all caps um i'm using the batshin i think that's how you say that um and we just want to enlarge it to an 11.5 that's the biggest that you can do on the uh cricut design space so we want to get it as close to we as we can to 11.5 without going over and then i'm just going to click the weld button um so that the letters stay together and then I'll hit make it and we don't have to mirror that or anything because um, it's it's just gonna be the stencil and we're actually gonna use um, shelf paper from the Dollar Tree to do this instead of vinyl because it's much less Okay, so here is the shelf paper from Dollar Tree that we're going to be using to cut our stencil. It's kind of neat because it's got, I don't know if you can see them, but it's got the little grid marks. Um, so you can see where to cut, although clearly I didn't use them. It's a little jagged, but anyway, it'll be all right. So I've cut a piece um, just long enough for the Cricut mat, and now we'll get that cut and get our words painted on. Okay, so now I'm just going to stick the piece of um, shelf paper that I have cut onto my Cricut mat and smooth that down really good. And then, and now I've just loaded it into the Cricut machine and we're just going to let it do its thing. Okay, so I just set the base material on vinyl even though it's actually shelf paper and we'll just let that get to cutting and I'll come back in just a second and we will um, once it finishes we'll weed it and then we'll be ready to um, put the design on our sign put, I mean put the put the letters on our sign put the welcome on our sign okay so now I'm just gonna weed out the letters because I'm using this for a stencil rather than um rather than sticking 
vinyl or something on there. So we're just going to weed out the letters so we can paint in there and get that done right quick and we will be ready to roll. Now I'm just going to take a piece of clear transfer tape and it has the grid marks if I can keep them lined up. Peel that off and use it to place my welcome letters. You wouldn't think you would need transfer tape when you're doing the backwards weeding like this, but you really do. Now just go over it with my little squeegee thingy really good. And we will be ready to roll. So now just peel the transfer tape the backing, well, not the transfer tape, but peel the backing off the, the shelf paper and place your lettering with the transfer tape. Just eyeball it and you can kind of see how to line it up good and I think that's about right. Y'all, I have literally never had it do that, but now that I'm trying to make a video, that's when it does it. But anyway, just keep on just kind of patting it down with your fingers and you can go over it with a squeegee some more once you get the transfer tape completely off. That transfer tape just helps it, um, helps you to line it up better. So it, it really is good stuff, even though it's causing a little bit of a problem now being so super, super sticky. But we're going to get that patted back down and it is all going to be good. And I'm going to give it one last good squeegee over the letters just because we had a little bit of trouble getting things to lay down right. You just be careful with the, the centers like of the E and the L and all that good stuff so that they don't come up. Just like I said, don't want the paint to bleed. So just work it over with the squeegee just a little bit and you know vinyl may actually stick a little bit better than the shelf paper but again the shelf paper is such an economical option i think that's it it makes it worth the the trouble and i'm gonna give it one last good squeegee over the letters just because we had a little bit of trouble getting things to lay down right you just be careful with the the centers like of the e and the l and all that good stuff so that they don't come up just like i said don't want the paint to bleed so just work it over with the squeegee just a little bit and you know vinyl may actually stick a little bit better than the shelf paper but again the shelf paper is such an economical option I think that's it, it makes it worth the, the trouble. And we're just going to use our white acrylic paint again and just a foam brush and just go real easy because again we don't want those edges to bleed and we're just going to kind of um, get it down in there and we'll probably have to do another coat but that's alright we just want to uh, get the edge get the letters well covered and see how this is going to turn out i'm hoping it's going to be super pretty but anyway just keep going over all your letters till you get it completely stenciled in and then you might want to go back over and give it a second coat. And I think that's what I'm gonna do right quick. And then we will be just about ready to um, go ahead and peel the stencil off and see what we're working with here, see what we got. That's the best part. That's exciting to see how it's gonna look when the stencil comes off. So now just get the edge of your shelf paper and just peel that up and you'll have to go through with your weeding tool to get the um, centers out of your letters but you can kind of get an idea how this is going just take that and get the, the center out of the E and also I forgot to mention you're going to want to um, 
let each coat dry before you go on with another one. I decided to do two coats and I was impatient so I hit mine with the heat gun. But either do that or just let it dry for a few minutes in between coats and that's gonna help it not to bleed too. But see how that's turning out with the welcome? I am really digging that. I'm sorry I've got this camera at an awkward angle right now. But anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so at this point, um, it's cute and all, but you're probably gonna, I'm sorry, I cannot get that turned right for you to see. I am a little directionally challenged, but anyway, that's cute, but you're probably gonna wanna add a little bit of embellishment. So I went um, to Hobby Lobby and got some of this um, black and white checked ribbon. I really love that. I went to um, Walmart and got some um, eucalyptus greenery and this runner from Hobby Lobby just makes some good um, greenery for the top of these too. And I'm just gonna be straight with you. I am not the best bow maker, so I do not feel confident in giving any sort of tutorial on how to make a good bow and a good topper. But um, I do want to show you this one that's already done. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even make this bow and topper. My daughter did. Um, and I think she did a good job on that, probably better than I could do. But anyway, isn't that cute? So there's all kinds of things that you can do with these. But my recommendation would be to just um, pull up on YouTube, if you're not a, a bow maker either, pull up a good uh, YouTube tutorial on um, how to make a bow and then just slip that greenery in on either side or really however you want to do it. Um, but that's, that's just the basics of how to make the wood round and... I just really love those door hangers, and I hope you do too, and like I said, since I can't make a whole lot of them with some limited time, and we're planning my daughter's wedding, so we have just a whole lot going on, but um, maybe you'll get a chance to make your own, and either way, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please um, hit that like button and subscribe, and um, also check out the blog at mochkaintomaking.com. Thank you for watching.